Hello and welcome to a first tutorial on recording great songs on GarageBand. Well, not recording them, actually creating them. And not songs. Well, this one is a song because there is a choir. So anyway, let's get started. I want this to be a soundtrack piece. Um, that's all I've decided so far. And I actually have a nice chord sequence worked out. So... I'm going to record that first on the piano part. There. And let me just actually fix all that up. Because I want each note to have the same velocity. And if you don't know what velocity means, it is how hard the note is pressed, basically. So an E minor chord, which goes down to an F major chord. And if you're wondering, I am actually using a MIDI keyboard, so I can play things to work out melodies and so on. And next, after the F sharp major chord. I want a D flat major chord, which with a third inversion, so the A flat will be at the bottom. So, so that would be an A flat, F natural, and C sharp, or D flat, as I prefer to call it. And the last chord that we need here is a dominant seventh in the key of E flat minor, so it would be a B flat, D, F, and A flat, or a G sharp. So you can hear this. Let me just turn off the metronome for the moment. So play. And as you can hear, that chord wants to go back here. So that's a good way to write a chord sequence. Have the last chord in your chord sequence wanting to go to your home chord, which for me is E flat minor. So once I've got, I've just duplicated this because I want maybe to have a slightly longer and this will probably be an ostinato a repeating chord sequence throughout the whole piece but I might change things up later so now I want to write the bass line so I will have my lower strings which in this case would be double basses and cellos so I will actually just cheat and just copy and paste that or actually I alt clicked it, which is a really great way because it does that. So if we hear this one on its own. Now I like that, but I want to change something. Because in this these chords... Of this ascending bit, so where it goes like this, back to the home chord. So I will actually, because these notes belong to the chord, so I can use them. So I will still have, I'll actually put these down the octave. So it's, let me just play that. So let me just copy and paste that, or alt click that, whatever you call it, and play. And I really love that ascending bit. 
Okay, so now I will... Um, I think I won't actually have piano. No, I, I won't have a bass line at the start. So it'll just be four bars of piano chords, then the basses, bass strings come in. I'll just paste these in here. And then now I think... I want a really nice trombone, and, it's, and the trombone section on the garage band sounds terrific. Let me just play some really low notes. And something just happened there where I didn't play the right instrument. That lovely low notes. So let me just actually double that at the octave. I'm going to turn this velocity right the way up. So if we could just hear from here. a bit earlier. Nope, that doesn't work. Uh, I'll actually just copy the bass line there. I think that's the way, way it's going to work best. And then double the octave. And what I actually want to do is duplicate this piano line. So this will be my right hand of the piano so I can have something like that which I'll actually have come in a bit higher but and right here so let me just record a few notes first and I don't really need any of those notes apart from one of them just for a reference. So these will be quavers and maybe bring the velocity to 100 in, in an arpeggio of E flat minor. I actually want to zoom in, I prefer it this way. I will drag that to the end of there. And now the next note it will go to is B flat because the, the next chord is F sharp major, which is F sharp. A sharp and C sharp, which really works with. Well, I should actually be calling it G flat major, but for the purposes of this, it doesn't matter as much. So B flat, C sharp, and I think I will now go. The next chord is a. E flat major. So I'll go down one semitone here to the F natural. And then I want to actually bring this this last chord out. And that. I'll bring that up to B flat and then just have this. You'll hear how that sounds like right now. Oh, I like that. And I don't want to have exactly the same accompaniment. So I'll have a just oscillating quivers here calm things down a bit. Yes, that's better. The next chord. And finally, I think I'll actually have a odd interval here. That is a diminished fifth but it goes with the dominant seventh chord so we will see how that sounds actually 
actually, I think I felt better as an F. Yeah, with this ending. C sharp to D. Okay. Now, I, let me just command T to cut that and copy all these out because, as I said, I want the Discord sequence to be an well, I'm not sure if it's really called an ostinato, but it does repeat. It's continuous. So, I, I do want some lower voice, just one. Oh, that's really nice. So if I actually just copy that. Now I need to make sure this is actually singable. Well, that is way too low. But I would like to have these in perfect fits. That is about singable. Hmm. If I replay it, no, okay, I'll just leave it. Oh, that's, that's gonna sound great. Let's listen to that. That's great. And I just wanna actually duplicate this so I can have my lower voices here and then I can have upper voices. You know what? That's gonna go down the octave. It's because it will sound better whether it is singable or not. Okay, so I think I will have some percussion here just. Just extend this out to the end of the bar. I want to actually have this bit, big bass drum, very loud, play for the whole bar. First beat of each bar. Semi briefs, so that will be. And I actually just want to see what this sounds like without any accompaniment, and I might leave it as it is. Yes, that sounds good. I think if I just have actually change the mood slightly, I will actually change. Oh, look. If I change it to. Change the key to F sharp major. The actual key, not just the chord. For now, just for a while. I will just play that chord there and then work from there. So that's going to be about four bars long. So I want this to be a change in mood. So the velocity is 80, that's great. And now the next chord. And then this will actually bring us back to the home key of E flat minor. So let's hear this. And then that leads us back to the minor. But, uh, let's hear just hear that. That might sound better on clarinets. I want to have kind of a suspension here. Yes. 
actually I think I will change my overall tempo down to about a hundred. Just hear how that sounds. Yeah, I think that sounds better. Just because I thought this bit sounded a bit too fast. And I won't go straight back to a bit to louder. I will just I will actually have a gradual build up so it gets louder and louder and louder and then it's very loud at the end, which is always really cool. And I need to work out what chords. So I think I'll have that, obviously. And now, I know that sounds terrible. Flat minor. I think I like that. So I was up. Okay. So here we've just got very simple chords. E flat minor on a dominant seventh, which is B flat, D, F, and A flat. And then I want to. that as a diminished seventh now so just change one note from the B flat to a B natural so it sounds that, that sounds actually quite good C minor so let's hear how this these four bars sound And now we are in C minor. What I actually want to do is that sounds much better. I actually want to have it modulate to D minor now. So it will be which will go to D. So I just, I like to have the each thing in groups of four bars because each it does just make everything easier because each phrase should be but should only be about four bars long like you don't have it in a regular number like three or five it is or eight or twelve or sixteen are good as well. Now what I want to do here is a really, I'll just show you on the piano, is a really nice chord, um, chordal pattern, which is used in a lot of Baroque music, especially in a lot of Bach's music. So we are in D minor now. So what we want to do is, this is called the circle of fifths. So we're gonna start on D, go down a fifth to G, Go down a fifth to C, go down a fifth to F, go down a fifth to B flat, then go down a fifth, well I'm going to go down a diminished fifth to E natural, then go down a fifth to A, and then go back down a fifth to D. Now that goes, sounds quite low so I'll just play that, but rather than going down and keep changing, going down octaves, I'm going to keep it around about the same octave so it will sound So we're going to end it as okay so with chords that sounds like and it goes back to D minor so I will use that lovely chord sequence 
but I actually want to change the instrument here. I will write the part in piano so I'm not restricted by any limited range because piano has probably the biggest range of any instrument. Well, biggest one of all the ones that I'm using at the moment. So this next chord, G minor, and we move to C major. And then I actually want to extend this out to eight bars long. But that is F major. And then we go to B flat major. And now this is where we go down a diminished fifth to E. But then we can actually do a diminished chord here, so it sounds E, G, B flat, G. There. And then we go down a fifth or up a fourth to A major. And then from A major back to the D minor chord. So you'll just hear that. I love that chord. Now since this is actually the eighth bar, I don't want to this sounds like the start of a new phrase, so I will actually have it go. So then the start of the next phrase is right there. So I will actually keep that part, and then I will have the bass line of this in the lower strings. So I will actually delete almost all of them so I can write it myself. I will start it here. diminished fifth interval that I used earlier well I was going to use but it didn't sound very right but it sounds lovely here and since we went up here okay. okay so I actually want to put that part in the timpani but I know I should really have my timpani tuned to tonic and dominant I could have it tuned to the tonic. Mm, no, I will just have about 20 timpanies, 20 timpani, or whatever the plural of timpani is, but I'm going to put the velocity of this up because this sounds great. I actually want to have a more distinct rhythm. And I will just sort of delete all those. Yeah, okay. So I've got my rhythm of the timpani. If that could, that could work. No, that really wouldn't. Actually, I think I will actually. The extra timpani hit sounds better, I think. Yeah. So I'll just alt click these. Set them to the right notes. So if we listen to all these here. I want to have that as four semi quavers, and this is two quavers. Yeah, that sounds nice. Now, I definitely do need more bass here, so I will add that to the bassoon. And the lowest, what's the lowest note here? It would be an A. No, sorry, a D. No, that sounds terrible. 
Okay, and I will also have these chords being played by the flute section actually. But maybe an octave higher than earlier, yes, an octave higher would sound better. Now I'm gonna have percussion like pounding crazy percussion here. Probably just have bass drum and snare drum actually. I'll just record something. So maybe some sort of military feeling to it. I know how this at full velocity. And I'll actually just zoom in here. Is that alright? No, I will zoom out. This is my preferred zoom level. I'll have these in seven groups. No, that's actually too high of a velocity, maybe 110 sounds right. Yeah, great. And I only want to write one bar because I know I'm going to be copying and pasting this. And I'll have it just two quivers there. No, these are way too fast, so I'll just have quivers here. Send those out to quivers and to quiver. So this is and sort of actually I will just plan T that there and then alt click everything so it just goes right up to the end of the phrase. No I, whoops, change the pan there. Okay, so I want to have lovely crazy sound covers here, like... Something like that. So I will just take these chords here. I'll actually put these in the second violins. These chords. And now in the first violins I will have the sound covers. So... An octave higher and highest velocity. Now that is too high actually, so I'll bring that down the octave. D A F. And just cut and paste this. And then cut and paste this, and then just change the notes to fit with the chord, which is G minor. So G, B flat, D, so, that, so this whole, oh, I need to do this top one. Are they even semi quivers? I am not paying attention. Those are semi quivers. So I am actually having semi quivers in here. These. No. Okay, just forget what I just said right there. Okay, so anyway, back to here. Our next chord is C major, so. And F major. So I'll change all the E's to F's, all the G's to A's uh, there. Now this is the good thing, really good thing about circle of fifths chords chord sequence as you can have really nice sequences so I will come on to that later um, so our next chord is 
and B flat. And that's again, I was already uh, just up with that. Now this is the lovely chord here. Let's hear this. Oh, something went wrong there. Need to fix this. And now we are in a major chord. Actually, no. Okay, so let's listen to this last chord. Actually, I will. And paste the first part of this because that is the same chord as the very first chord. The joys of copying and pasting for lazy musicians. <laughs> mm. And obviously, we will return to our D minor after that. Now trumpets. What could the trumpets do? They could play. Mm. Well, no, actually. I will actually, for now, and tubers, and I will actually just copy and paste this, so circle of fifths sequence. Oh, I have a great idea here. Um, like these bits and I I want to have this a very light note so it will sound like this that might sound better French horns or just one continuous note actually have that on a French horn section crescendo. So if we listen to this. Now the problem with this is that it sort of ends about here so I have to move this over so it's now again that came off a bit early so I need to get it right so it ends right on the bar line. Almost Yeah. And then I will have all oh, French horns playing these chords. Lovely. Oh, just normal French horns, not very low. Not the crescendo ones. Now the lowest note here needs to sound right on a French horn. No, that sounds like a cow's fart of some sort. So, let's just see how this sounds. Okay, so 
that I think I am coming to the end of this piece. So I want to add trombones in halfway through this sequence. Yeah, that sounds good. So I need to sort of have some sort of melodic line in the trumpet so it can be... probably wouldn't fit with the chords. Let us just take the chords and join that bit together. Take the chords. No, these chords are just for reference, so it doesn't matter how they sound. Actually, I'll delete the chords as I go through each bar. first part. So the next chord is F. I'll have that bar exactly the same. And I will actually add a dominant seventh on that last bit. And then those notes. So we don't even need this trap, some of these, oh, oh dear, okay. Never delete a track unless you're sure it is empty. Now that, you definitely can't hear the trumpets there, so I'll just turn it up. perfect cadence because why not <laughs> oh right I haven't really used my choir you know what just sort of add more stuff if you want okay I wasn't even paying attention to what chords these were I will have lower voices singing here I Okay. That sounds great. And then I will have some upper voices. So that's a B flat. And I also actually also have the trumpet. Play it here. And I actually want to also have these semi quavers in the piano, but sort of a shimmering effect so i just want to hear how this signs up though no maybe it's done a bit then i'll 
these cords down here as well to build the texture and here I will put these down into the piccolo as well just to that sounds way too high velocity on these piano parts because I think that's way too outstanding from the other parts and it just sounds a bit silly. Okay whoops okay so that uh, have I used the top part? No I'll just delete the top track and as you can see that is the piece finished so before I actually finish I want to add reverb to everything because generally I think it sounds better more realistic if you just add reverb to all the tracks and we will just listen to the end. we will just listen to the end of this on the very last chord, just to see if it's on the See, you can, it lingers on slightly at the end, which is what I want to happen. Okay, now I want to arrange strings and, well, the whole orchestra basically. So, sort of have woodwind slide to the left. I'm not really following a specific the proper orchestral arrangement but it's always nice to arrange them in a stereo format because it adds more depth to the entire piece that percussion at the right and timpani at the left so if we just listen to the if you're listening in stereo with headphones or stereo speakers you sh this should sound better does sound better I think so I, you can well if you do find this tutorial useful you can like it or add it to your favorites or subscribe or and if you do use it if you do find it helpful and make your own pieces on GarageBand um, uh, make it a video response to this tutorial because I'd love to check some of it out and if you do like you can actually buy this track on Bandcamp and you can buy some of my other pieces on Bandcamp and all the pieces on my Bandcamp page are royalty free so you can use them in your YouTube videos your whatever you want and you have to buy it off my Bandcamp page and credit me Dylan Cargill as the composer so I will just play this piece now and thank you for watching